Uh, hello E51, I am back for rotating DC machine. So uh, if you missed out yung ating linear DC machine, uh, you may want to go back to to that video first kasi uh, I'll be discussing rotating DC machine in in accordance sa kung paano natin din discuss yung uh, linear DC machine. Okay. So the idea of uh, rotating DC machine is that uh, it's just like linear DC machine but instead of linear motion uh, your your motion is rotational so ganun lang siya uh, so instead of uh, velocity we'll be talking about angular uh, angular speed instead of uh, linear acceleration we'll be talking about angular acceleration instead of um, instead of linear displacement we'll be talking about uh, angular displacement uh, so yun lang yan um, hmm. uh, we'll be discussing torque kasi mas appropriate ang torque for for rotational machines but uh, yung idea ng torque eh, kukunin natin from uh, from your force okay and then you still have the same uh idea for for induced voltage okay so i guess that's that's it uh yeah all okay, right so for this machine we'll be starting with a simple rotating loop so you just have a single loop so it's a single loop that has one turn so it goes from it starts here and then after one turn nakabalik na siya isang balik lang yan na yan okay so you have loops of many turns such that ilang beses siyang iikot but well multiplier lang naman yung number of turns so hindi naman siya masyadong mahirap so as long as well oriented na kayo sa single turn uh, simple rotating loop single turn so madali nang i-ori madali nang i project yun on multiple turns kasi multiplier lang yung turns okay so we have the following parts uh, you have the rotor yung ating rotating part and the stator yung ating stationary part so for this course we'll be uh, dealing with machines whose rotor are yung ating coils and stator yung ating magnetic field there are machines that uh, yung magnetic field yung rotor part so basically it's the magnetic field that is rotating and then the coils are the stator stator part so it's coils yung naka-fix sila yung hindi gumagalaw okay so there are machines na ganun uh, uh, there are pros and cons in using that uh, but in our in our case we'll be using machines that are uh, this, uh, machines na yung armature yung ating rotor and then we have the magnetic field as the stator so uh, for rotating machines uh, well at, at least for introduction to rotating machines we'll be using yung ating uh, permanent magnets as a source of magnetic field uh, at least for introduction uh, but but you can always develop electromagnets para mag produce ng magnetic field here kasi kailangan mo lang naman ng ng flux okay so you just need that flux and then uh, I want to emphasize this mm -hmm. uniform air gap air gap width so you our assumption here is that at, if this is your coil if this is the diameter of the coil in all points of this diameter as it forms a circle it's um, it's it's air gap between the magnet and the coil is is uniform at all points so basically the mm -hmm. idea is kapag umikot na yung ating machine the distance here is the same as the distance here and the distance here and the distance here and so on and so forth so parehas lang siya mm -hmm. it's important because uh, your the distance of the magnetic field in the coil affects the affects the voltage induction so uh, if you have a uniform air gap therefore throughout the rotation of the coil you have a uniform voltage produced at least because uh, dahil sa magnetic field of course uh, given a constant yung ating uh, speed okay um, 
So we have the angular position. I, I guess I'll just leave that to you. You you have the physics naman physics naman before. So I I think you're well oriented with this uh, uh, these concepts. Uh, yeah, I'll leave this to you. Work okay. So work uh, for rotating bodies. It's torque times uh, theta. Okay, um, power is just uh, the rate of doing work, so it's d over dt of torque and theta, so if you apply d over dt on theta, it becomes t tau omega, so it's uh, your torque times uh, speed of rotation of your, of your shaft, of your machine, so it describes the mechanical power of the machine. Uh, yeah, so we'll be using this spe specifically on p-convert. Because if you can still remember your P convert, it's the, the power at the bar or the power at the coil in this case. Because we'll be talking about coils now instead of just bars. But the power at the loop uh, is, well, on linear DC machine, it's force times velocity. So on rotating bodies, it's it will be torque and omega speed. Okay, uh, yeah, okay. So just like linear DC machines, uh, the thing here is that this one uh, you have this coil let's consider four segments As I, I think I have a top view of this uh, where uh, this one okay so this is your top view for that uh, you have four segments segment a B segments BC segment CD and then segment DA so I'll go back okay so as you can see, if this if this is machine if this machine is rotating this way, going that direction, uh, you have a magnetic field north to south, so it has a magnetic field going this way. Now, if you look at segment AB, at this particular point, it's like a linear DC machine that has a magnetic field going this way of this direction and a velocity that's going upward perpendicular to to this magnetic field uh, so so the analysis since this is just the same as as your linear dc machine th then we can use the same analysis for linear dc machine and again as i have said previously you have four segments here so you have another segment here segment cd so for segment CD, since this is rotating this way, uh, you still have the same direction of magnetic field. It's going that way, but the direction of velocity is going down because it's on the other side. Now you have this segment BC. It's basically parallel. Its, it's velocity is in parallel with the magnetic field. And you have segment DA, its velocity is in parallel with the magnetic field. So you have four segments, all with uh, certain velocities and experiencing magnetic fields. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay, so let's analyze the, the voltage. Okay, so if you have a magnetic field and the volt and uh, velocity, therefore you, we know that we can have an induced voltage. However, Take note that your formula for induced voltage is B, v, v cross B dotted to L. And because, uh, well, you have, and because of that V cross B, you have a V B sine theta. Now, if your velocity is in parallel with the magnetic field, so that makes V cross B equal to zero. It's, it's basically uh, V B sine of 180 or V B sine of um sine of zero because they are in parallel they are in the same direction so it's uh, they are in parallel they are in the same plane so it's either sine of 180 or sine of zero and when you have a sine of 180 and sine of zero that's just equal to zero okay so your v cross b for those segments where the velocity is in parallel with the magnetic field the the, the voltage there is equal to zero so what does it mean for our loop it means that <laughs> the voltage at BC and the voltage at DA is equal to zero such that your total voltage 
is well total the total voltage is technically the summation of all of these segments because they are in series but since bc and cd are, in z are zero so you you just have an edc plus an eba so how about the polarity so the polarity makukuha natin siya by using right hand rule on this branch and on this segment and on this segment so if you use uh, right hand rule then you can get uh, this polarity where b is higher potential than a d is higher potential than c such that you have an a total where d is higher potential than a and the total voltage is equal to the summation of all of this one two three and four but since this uh, one and three one and three are equal to zero so you only have this e edc and eba now so why is it uh sorry why is it to vbl uh it is to vbl because we are expecting that this segment has the same length as this segment it's experiencing the same magnetic field as this segment these two segments are experiencing the same magnetic field because they are in the, under the same uh, set of magnets and they are uh, running at the same speed because this is just one coil. Therefore, you have the same V, the same B, and the same L. Therefore, they are inducing the same voltage on those segments. So, EDC plus EBA is just twice of EDC or twice of e EBA or twice of VBL. So, that's, that's it. Now, uh what will happen if segment ba and segment c they change position so take note if if they change position you still have the north segment at uh, the north pole here the south pole here the same speed of rotation so you are still expecting the same polarities here however a is now positive and d is now negative as compared to to the previous one where d is positive mm -hmm. and a is negative so what will happen here well this this particular slide just tells you that if you rotated this loop 180 degrees you just get the negative mm -hmm. polarity of whatever is that uh, whatever is this polarity before so uh yeah okay uh so this one is important, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, so this is what happens when you induce the voltage through a loop. Mm -hmm. So as you rotate this machine, this is in position one, this is the position, mm -hmm. this is position one, so it's, it is right there. Mm -hmm. um, and then as you mm -hmm. rotate that on position two up to position three, Oops. So you have an increasing voltage. It takes the form of sine because your V cross B is a function of sine. So it's basically V, V B sine. So therefore your voltage takes the form of sine. Now, uh, as you reach uh, uh, position three, it's basically uh, the peak voltage. Uh, you will go to position 4 uh, no uh, it's position 4 is this one okay you will go to a position that is mm -hmm. this position which is essentially mm -hmm. just the same as this position mm -hmm. so you just get the same the same voltage mm -hmm. as position 2 so they are the, yeah until you mm -hmm. go back to somewhat similar position 1 where A mm -hmm. and B on that same position uh, on on that same orientation will be on mm -hmm. different positions that is position 4 well still the voltage there will be zero mm -hmm. just like position 1 mm -hmm. okay so that's basically half cycle now as you go further as you rotate another 180 degrees mm -hmm. you have the same you actually you basically have mm -hmm. the same pattern but a mm -hmm. is now getting a negative value as compared uh, as a negative voltage a uh, negative potential versus b so you in, in terms of vab we have a negative voltage so that's basically uh, how your voltage induction works and then uh, and then the cycle goes on okay so what's the difference of the well uh, as you can see this is a sinusoidal waveform uh, this is actually ac 
So this is not DC, this is AC waveform, AC sinusoidal waveform. So how do we make this DC? Uh, one, one. That is one prime. That's that is one of the primary considerations why we use curved poles, uniform, uniform width. Because if you use uniform width, therefore instead of getting a sinusoidal waveform, you get a flat, a, a flat curve. So it's it's like a step voltage. Uh, it's 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 like a step of negative one and positive one. So instead of getting a, a sinusoidal waveform, you get these flat voltages here because of the uniform uniform uh, air gap air gap width uh, such that what will happen here is at all points here your magnetic field is more likely perpendicular is always almost always perpendicular to your velocity because of the curved pole this doesn't happen when you have uh, straight poles Okay. Uh, so so now we have a voltage that is not sinusoidal in waveform, but this is still the this is still AC. Uh, later on in the course, I'll be showing you how this waveform becomes DC. Uh, for larger DC machines, this is basically a simplification of the. It's basically a simplification of the formula. So the induced voltage under the pole edges is equal to zero because you don't have a magnetic field there. Uh, ah, no, no, yeah, okay, I think, yeah, that's one way to say it. And then, yeah, and then this one, uh, this is just a simplification of the constants on the machine. Um, okay, so that's your... Um, what do you call this? That's your DC machine. Uh, oh, well, that's your uh, single rotating loop. Uh, as you can see, our output here is not yet DC. DC is still AC, but at least we make use of that uh, curved pole. And then later on, I'll be showing you how to transform this AC waveform, this flat AC waveform into, into DC. Okay, so yeah, I guess that's it for, for this uh video